All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome, Antelo. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone, for another vlog. It feels good, man, to be kind of back on schedule doing like Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, Wildcard Wednesday vlog. Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, Wildcard Wednesday vlog. It adds a sense of, like, you know, normalcy to my life instead of, like, oh, I have to pre-shoot a vlog because I'm flying to here, and then I have to shoot a travel vlog and edit it the day I get back so I have time to upload it so it can be up on Thursday, and then I have to pre-shoot two reviews, and then I have to do another review, and then I got to quick upload it and do all this stuff. It's, it's just nice to be back home and back into kind of like a regular routine but thank you guys so much for joining me um let me get out my vlog notes here we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about this week uh bunch of sort of random news kind of i guess <laughs> kind of i guess at the top including an interesting article that came out of the uk that was talking about uh the dangers of vaping through your nose okay and then there was another article that recently got posted just today in fact i posted it on grimgreen.com about the fda but uh yeah we're gonna do some first impressions i have a couple boring first impressions i don't have a lot of first impressions this week i got I got two tanks and an RDA, I think, to do first impressions on. But I'm going to do a retro vaping segment. I'm going to do, hopefully, a review for things that never got reviewed segment. Um, like I said, we're going to do beer and shout-outs, and we're going to get news. And so we're just going to, let's just get into this. So before we get too far into this, I want to mention, um, you probably noticed in the last vlog, and you're probably noticing currently right now in this vlog, that it's not shot at 60 frames per second. I don't mind doing the reviews at 60 frames per second, but these file sizes that my camera produces for 1080p 60 frames per second video are gigantic. And so my computer is going on three years old now. I desperately either need to revamp this one a little bit, get a better video card, get some more RAM, get another hard drive in there, or I need to just buy a completely new uh, computer. I had a guy up in uh, Oregon, maybe I could, I don't know, I haven't talked to him in forever. And he might need a new custom built PC. Um, I, I'm sorry, I like PCs for video editing and for my day-to-day -day sort of work on the internet. Macs are great, I have a MacBook Pro, but I don't like editing video with it. Uh, I've been using a Windows machine for so long, I have such a streamlined process for like editing videos, it's what I use to edit the podcast as well, and so, yeah, I'm only shooting my vlogs in 1080p, 30 frames a second, which doesn't seem like a huge difference, but it's drastically, it drastically reduces the toll that these giant video file sizes take on my computer. I can edit them faster, I can render them faster, and that means no more late vlogs or, you know, any fishiness going on there. So yeah, so that's just how it's going to be. The vlog's going to be 30 frames a second. The regular review videos during the week are going to be 60 frames a second, and that's, uh, you know, that's where I'm that's where I'm comfortable at, okay? <laughs> I also just want to give some quick constructive criticism to people in the comment section of my weekly review series. Um, the last time I did like a hard count, there were over 150 different vaping related YouTube channels out there, okay? That's 150, out of which I'm probably subscribed to like 20, maybe a little bit more, maybe like 25 of them, okay? So when I review a product, <clears throat> like I'm gonna review, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm doing next week to be quite honest with you, but eventually when I review a product, let's say it's the Griffin, Griffin 25 millimeter tank. Eventually when I review this product, when I'm done using it and I'm comfortable speaking to it and I do a review for it, <clears throat> in the comments, people are always like, oh well, Super Dave's vaping channel already reviewed this. And I go, okay, I don't, I can't possibly know that. I can't possibly subscribe to all 150 plus vaping YouTube channels. And chances are with the limited amount of hardware and uh, juices that exist out there, chances are, yes, yeah, someone else, the probably a hundred of us are going to be reviewing the exact same thing. So, you know, there's a, a lot of YouTube channels out there. So you don't need to tell me like, oh, well, uh, Super Dave's vaping channel he already reviewed that or this guy already reviewed that or this girl uh, you know uh, amanda vapes 92187 uh, already reviewed that it's like yeah we're all reviewing the same stuff okay there's a limited amount of hardware and an exponentially large number of youtubers uh vapors on youtube so yeah i'm just 
I have my own method. I have my own process. I know when I'm comfortable speaking about something. I have a cue that I keep track of. Cool, cool, man. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. So like I said, random news stuff here at the top of the program. I got some new batteries. I got these purple guys right here. These are the LG HD2. They are 2000 mAh, 25 amp batteries. And I didn't really know that these existed. I I speak with Battery Mooch on, pretty on a regular basis. Um, he sends me a lot of emails and I always say, hey, thank you back. And then I I end up talking about it in the vlog, but when I was I was recording a podcast like a week ago with Ruby, and she's like, "Oh, I went over to imrbatteries.com and I got some of those new purple LGs," and I was like, "Oh, cool! Like, I don't okay, I don't know what those are. Like, that's not impressing me at all." So I went over there and I saw them, and I was like, "Oh, wow, those are really good price. Oh, they're two thousand ma. Oh, they're twenty five amps." Wow, that's interesting. I wonder what Battery Mooch has to say about them. And Ruby's like, no, they're Battery Mooch approved. Sure enough, I go to Battery Mooch's approved batteries. He's got like a spreadsheet for it on his, you know, on his ECF blog. Sure enough, right down at the bottom under 18650s, the LG HD2 25 amp, true 25 amp, 2000 ma battery. And I'm like, cool. So I ordered four of them. They were only five bucks per battery, five bucks per battery, imrbatteries.com. It's it's where I get all my batteries. For anyone asking, that's where I get all my batteries. And I bought them, ordered them. I ordered two sets, so I ordered four together because I use them in a lot of mods and box mods. And so I bought them specifically to use in the Titan and in the Noisy Cricket because I want good, longer lasting, high amp limit, reliable batteries for those particular devices. And so far, man, these batteries have been uh, really great. LG HD2s, I had no idea about them until Ruby pointed it out, and then I went and bought some from imrbatteries.com. I'll link down in the description to imrbatteries.com. They have a slew of batteries. And what I can also do is link, I don't know how, I don't know how I'm gonna link to Mooch's rec recommended battery chart. Maybe I'll upload it to Imager, and then I'll put an Imager link down in the description so you can just go right to the graphic, but he's got it separated out, 18350s, 18650s, and then 26650s on there, and it's all like, these are the batteries I've tested, these are the batteries that I would use, and I trust this guy pretty much implicitly, so absolutely, Battery Mooch, thank you for that, and uh, yeah, I guess thank you to Ruby as well for pointing out that the LG HD2s uh, are actually a thing, that they actually exist. I guess there was a firmware update, version 3.1, for the RX 200 to get it up to 200 watts, 250 watts, sorry, it did 200 watts, duh. Um, I haven't done it yet, but that's a thing. I just, for some reason, that was in my vlog notes, so I wanted to mention it. There's a new firmware, 3.1, available for the RX 200, so for the Relo, that does it, that goes up to 250 watts. I've never, I've never even cracked 200 watts on the Relo, so I don't know, 250 watts, sure. I don't care. I'm never going to go that high, so it doesn't really matter for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, a fellow named Simon emailed me as well, and this is really cool. A fellow named Simon emailed me, and then I saw a guy named Michael post this as well on Facebook, Michael Vapors, to customvapefirmware.com. And what it is, is if you go over to this website, which I'm going to do right now, control V, customvapefirmware.com, um, you pick your device, the Evic VT, the Cuboid, or the RX200, and what it is is custom graphics for the device itself. Because you know, on the DNA200, you can change your lock screen, you can change all the graphics in there, you can change your boot up screen, you can put whatever graphics on there you want. It's a little bit more of an involved process with the RX devices and the Joytech devices because you have to like flash a custom firmware, but. Thankfully, people are doing this, and you, they're they're uploading them to this site, and you can download them. There's one for the cuboid that's a stormtrooper. There's one that's Judge Dredd. There's one that's Kirby. There's Star Fox. There's a Todd's Reviews one. There's a Batman Arkham Knight one. Hashtag just saying if anybody wants to make a Grim Green custom firmware for the Joytech cuboid and then get it on this site, I I will be your best friend and I and I will actually use it. I just thought this was really cool. It's an it's I'm I'm all about you know customizing things and uh, graphics and this is just really cool and it's nice it's cool. <clears throat> pardon me, to be able to just go to this website and then. Download whatever custom firmware you want. You want Darth Vader on your cuboid? Done. You download this custom firmware, you upload it to your cuboid, and now 
on your screen above the volts, you'll have a picture of Darth Vader. I just thought that was I just thought that was very very cool. So thank you Simon and Michael Vapors for sending that over my way. Now, I don't have any California updates. As of right now, as of right now that I'm recording this, this is Tuesday, there have been no updates to California. I see Not Blowing Smoke posting on Instagram. I see Stefan posting on Instagram saying, the bills have moved. Remember last week or a couple weeks ago, I was talking about how they had stalled these bills in the state legislature. The bills are out of the legislature and they are headed to the mayor's desk. And this is, <laughs> this is the last... This is the last stopping point for these bills. So we've been calling, you know, like crazy. We tied up the phone lines before. We need to keep calling again. And if this is going to be relevant on, on vlog day on Thursday, then please keep calling. Follow Not Blowing Smoke. Follow Stefan on Instagram and Facebook. I'll put the mayor's phone number up here uh, in case... We can. We still have time to call. I, I called. I know multitudes of people who called, but we're asking to for him to veto this. We're asking him to veto this. And building off of that, if you need some maybe a little bit of ammo for your conversation, Consumer Affairs just posted a article, and the big headline of it is FDA funded study concludes e cigs may not be so bad after all brilliant, right? I posted this on GrimGreen.com and I was like, I hate to, I hate using the phrase, I told you so, but I freaking told you so. It goes on to talk about smoking rates and there's a, there's a doctor, there's a David T. Levy, a PhD professor in the Department of Oncology at Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center in Washington, D.C., Good Lord, how do you fit all that onto a business card? But he has a great quote in here that says, we believe that the discussion to date has been slanted against e-cigarettes, which is unfortunate because the big picture tells us that these products appear to be used mostly by people who already are or who are likely to become smokers. We are concerned that the FDA, which has asserted its right to regulate e-cigarettes, will focus solely on the possibility that e-cigarettes and other vapor nicotine products might act as a gateway to e-cigarette use possibly might act. That's exactly what they're focusing on. He says we're concerned that the FDA is going to overregulate these. He said that to date the discussion has been slanted against e-cigarettes, which is unfortunate because the big picture tells us something completely different. The big picture tells us something that we have known and believed this entire time. This is this is a fantastic article to, to read uh, and to share around, and I'll be posting a link to it in the description. In fact, let me do that now before I forget. Consumer Affairs article. Boom. So the last thing I wanted to talk about on the opening here of the uh, of the vlog video was a link. I believe this was posted on Facebook. I'm not 100% sure. It comes from metro.co.uk. And the headline on it is, do you vape? Don't blow it through your nose. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So the article starts off by saying it is well accepted that vaping can be a pretty good way to kick the cigarette habit. Around 2.6 million people in the UK vape regularly. However, with this new technology comes a whole new set of problems that users may not be aware of. Whether you smoke or vape, it's fairly common to exhale out of your nostrils. Some people just prefer the taste of their flavored e-cigarettes that way. But exhaling vapor out of your nose can actually cause damage to the inside of your nostrils. Many vapors have claimed that e-cigs have badly dried out their skin in their noses, and in many cases, causing random nosebleeds. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not funny, but... There's so many dry nostril, dry knuckle jokes that could go on right now that I don't, that's a road I don't even want to go down. The main chemical that's causing this is propylene glycol, PG, a dehydrating chemical that can suck the moisture out of sensitive skin inside your nostrils. Well, that's mostly true. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of what I vape is very, very high VG stuff. I don't vape a lot of PG. I would really also love to see their their numbers on this, like how many people came forward and mentioned that e-cigs have badly dried out the skin in their noses. This is nothing that I've experienced after seven years. And dude, I vaped for four years, uh, for a full year, for a full year, two years, I vaped nothing but 100% PG juices. And then after that, it was a 50-50 blend. And it wasn't until like the last two years that we got really, really heavy into VG. So I'd really be interested to see how many people exactly came forward and were complaining that 
e-cigs have badly dried out their noses. It, it goes on to say, um, it's usually not that serious, but one man, who, who this whole article seems to be based around, one man, William Keeler, told Metro.co.uk he experienced this in a particularly bad way around six months ago. And at its worst, he was picking bits of flesh out of my nostrils. I, okay, I'm not a doctor. It sounds like you have something crazy going on inside your nose, man. You know when you touch an open wound and it burns? That's what it felt like. There was a really strong burning sensation inside of my nose. And there was constantly a bad smell, which I can only describe as the smell of poo all day, every day. The smell of poo all day, every day. He said he went to the doctors. They assumed he was using cocaine, which, okay, now, you know, obviously... I first read through this article, I'm kind of questioning everything that's going on there. I've never been into a doctor and they go, wow, are you using cocaine? That seems like an incredible thing to jump to. So yeah, this article goes on and on and, and evidently their brilliant way of healing yourself is to just exhale through your mouth. So if you're a vapor and you're concerned about smelling poo all day and you're going to be picking bits of flesh out of your nose, which seriously, seven years vaping, never experienced that, um, exhale through your mouth. There you go. That's their big solution. How do you heal it? Exhale through your mouth. Brilliant. Brilliant. Metro.co.uk. Thank you so much for that crack reporting right there. Um, I'll post a link to it in the description. It's a little bit silly. It's not really something I'd share around. And again, you know, I don't know. Dry nostrils. Come on. What is this? Side effects of vaping? No, it's uh, I don't know. Something else. But again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just rambling right now. But like I said, I'll post a link down in the description to where you can check this out if you are interested. But um, let's talk about what I've been vaping. So yeah, this last week, what I have been vaping, um, this is going to be uh, pretty, pretty par for the course. If you, uh, if you're a regular viewer of my blogs, X vlogs, access vapes, M 17 dot mod Petrie on top with lane cove. My E I actually just rebuilt this today. Previously I was using the Ruby Roo build, which is a, uh, 24 gauge anarchist wire, uh, seven wrap on a 2.5 millimeter, uh, you know, posts to wrap around. Wow, this battery is completely dead. It's at 9%. I don't even think it's going to vape. So what I decided to do is I really realized that I like slightly bigger diameter coils. So what I did is I did an eight wrap, 24 gauge Niachrome anarchist wire around a three millimeter post came out to 0.26 ohms. I have it set to 64 Watts. This battery is so dead. I'm not even sure it's going to vape. Nope. Weak battery. Of course it's a weak battery. I wouldn't expect you to be a non-weak battery. You're only at 9%. I have been vaping this uh, just like crazy, and evidently I'm not going to get to vape it now, so there you go. Moving forward, I have the Silo 2000 from Mod Crate, and every time I use this device in a video, people ask about it, and people ask about it because I post it on Instagram, and then when I go to the Mod Crate site, I never see it for sale. They have like the Silo 900, the Silo 1000, the Silo 1300. This is the Silo 2000, which is the 2000 milliamp hour version of this box mod, and it's just a big honking beefy aluminum box mod, but it's become so reliable, it feels so durable, and it's got such a good battery life that I find myself using it constantly, just on the reg. This is the stainless steel Sub-Zero RDA, and what I discovered recently is the dot mod uh, caps fit perfectly on the top of the Sub-Zero. This is the black one from the Petri version two that I have on top of the Sub Zero. I bought the Sub Zero from Beyond Vape. Um, I had a black one, so I bought a silver one. I actually just bought a stainless steel 24 millimeter Sub Zero RDA that I'm really excited. I just got my shipping notification from Sub Home Innovations, so I'm excited about that. This is, I mean, pretty clearly on its way to becoming my uh, possibly my favorite atomizer of 2016, but I have a 0.4 ohm build in here right now. I have it set to 83 watts. Uh, this is uh, Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark from Grim Cult. This is, you know, one of my go-to favorite daily vapes, something I always have to have around. Oh, it's good. 
Oh, it's just so good. Uh, so, second to lastly, Noisy Cricket's back. Noisy Cricket is back in rotation. I was traveling a bunch there, and I had a atomizer on here with a build that I didn't really like. It was a Petri with a build that I wasn't enjoying, so it was in the back of my mind. I kept going, I have to rebuild that, I have to rebuild that, I have to rebuild that. So I finally have had some time to do some fiddling and building. So what I did is I just rebuilt my Twisted Messes version 2. I put, uh, you know, a fused Clapton in there. It's uh, 36 ga 38 gauge over 28 gauge. And I do a, a 7 wrap around a 3 millimeter. Comes out to 0.44 ohms like every freaking time. But I've got the red Noisy Cricket that I bought from VapeNW.com. And I have the matchy matchy red, uh, you know, DHD cap on top of the Twisted Messes version 2. The juice du jour right now is the... Uh, mango sticky rice from Craft Vapory. In fact, this represents the last of my mango sticky rice. There's probably, I don't know, three or four mils left in here. And once it's gone, then that's it. I'm out of it. But you know what? I've got a lot of great juices to try. I get sentimental about certain juices. Um, I took this on a trip to Vegas, and now every time I taste this juice, it reminds me of Vegas. It also reminds me of the bro trip we took to Arizona because I was vaping it, and I was blowing it at Dwayne, and he's like, ugh, that juice smells so bad, and I was like, Whew, clouds, bro, I don't care. But this has been just a, such a fantastic vape that, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I miss the cricket. I miss the noisy cricket. It was my daily, I vape this every day, I take it everywhere with me vape, and then as soon as I didn't have something to put on it, I kind of like set it aside, and I kept looking at it like, I need, to, I need to get back to that, I need to get back to that, and as soon as I got back to it, I remembered why I loved it so much. It's just a warm, delicious vape right in the mouth hole. So good, so warm, so flavorful. That mango sticky rice has steeped up to be very, very throaty. I don't remember it being so throaty. So what I do sometimes with sentimental juices that I have a good amount of, I had a 120 of this, right? And so I was vaping it and vaping it and vaping it. And I got down to like my last 30 mils and I'm like, uh, let's just wait. Let's come back to that later. And I let this one steep uh, for shit. Let's see, that was like last September. Uh, so it's been steeping like six months. Got it back out again. I just, you know, I like going back to juices that I have certain memories with. So it kind of takes you back there. As soon as I loaded this up, I was like, oh, that's such a good vape. It reminds me of Vegas. It reminds me of Bro Trip. And holy crap, it has steeped up to be incredibly throaty. But like I said, I'm down to the last of it. But oh, man, it's so good. And lastly, what I've been vaping, yeah. I got this uh, I got this blue Titan right here, Culture Cloud sticker on it. This is the Goon RDA that, look, I don't enjoy building on this RDA, but I love, love vaping on this RDA. I open it up to two airflows. It's damn near perfect. The flavor is on point. The build quality of the... Of the, <laughs> the build quality of this RDA is just stellar. 528 Custom Vapes did an awesome job on this RDA, and I have this cap on top that is Brad's caps Brad's caps I'm gonna post a link in the description I got handed this at vape mania the last vape mania in North Carolina and I was like oh cool yeah oh yeah I'll totally remember your name don't worry I totally will if I ever tell you that at an event like oh yeah I'll totally remember your name make me write it down somewhere write it on something to give to me because no I will not remember your name so I got home and I put it on the goon and I'm like this is great this is such an awesome tip it matches and everything and it's great on the goon and I don't remember who gave it to me and then someone messaged me on YouTube and said hey that's a Brad's cap cap and uh, I was like oh yeah Brad's caps he gave me some ones for the Kennedy before or he gave me a drip tips or the the chuff caps before Brad's caps makes good stuff. I got it on here and it just, this is one of my absolute favorite setups. This Titan, I love that the drip tip is green and blue. I love that this is stainless steel to match the button. And I love that this culture of cloud sticker on here is green with the blue and it, it all just kind of fits together really well. And I went out and bought myself some juice. There's one, there's a couple juices out there that I just love to death and I do not mind buying. And one of those is Dewey Boba. I mean, Jeanette 86 last year gave me a bottle of Dewey Boba at uh, Vape Mania, I think it was. This, not this last one, but like two meets ago. And she's like, 
hey, I just want you to try this. You know, I think you'll really like it. So I got home and I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. And so I took my first like three drags off of this Dewey Boba and I went and bought uh, 60 more mils of it. And I vaped through all of that. And it's been like a good four or five months pretty much. And I, I was feeling it again. I'm like, I need Dewey Boba in my freaking life. So I went to Elevated Vaping. I'll post the link in the description. I bought 90 more mils of it just because it's such a good juice. And it's not that it's like amazing or life-changing, but it is the only honeydew juice that I can vape that doesn't taste like a rubber Halloween mask. Every other honeydew that I've ever had in my life tastes like a rubber Halloween mask. I don't know why. I can't explain it. It's just something I taste with this dewy boba. All I get is like a very boba, creamy, sweet uh, honeydew flavor. And this combo has been just freaking rocking. Oh, it's delicious. That is so delicious. So yeah, that's what I have been vaping. We covered a lot of random news there at the top of the program, and we covered what I've been vaping. Uh, what it's time to do right now is go over there to the beer section. So the beer we have to drink tonight comes from Chuck Alec, Independent Brewers. I can find very little information about this brewer or this beer. They're not uh, on Beer Advocate, which is kind of like my, you know, every dr time I drink a beer, I'm like, oh, let's go over to Beer Advocate, see how it is. Not on there. This brewer is not even on there. Um, this is called 1850 Runner. And because I'm a vapor, I can't look at that without thinking 18650. But it's actually just 1850 Runner. But I, every time I look at it in the fridge, I'm like, oh, 18650 runner? Oh, no. It's not 18650 runner. It's 1850 runner. It is a brown porter, chocolate, light berry, oaky hops, 6.3% alcohol. There you go. Uh, Chuck Alec Independent Brewers, handcrafted by Grant Farley, head brewer. Old school beers for new school palettes. And they have chuckalec.com. So let's go over to chuckalec.com. See what they have to say about the world. Yeah, old school beers for new school palettes. These beers are our core beers. Um, so 1850 Runner Brown Porter is the first one up. Tasting notes, chocolate, light berry, oaky hops. Let's read the description real quick. Uh, During the Civil War, our ancestor Stephen Fraley was ambushed and attacked by men with a grudge. Fraley evaded them by running into his home and hiding underneath his wife's his wife's large hoop dress. <laughs> In honor of his life, we brew this London-style running porter, a style which date back, dates back to the heyday of porters. In the early 1800s, porters were either aged upwards of 18 months and called keeping porters or served fresh and called running porters. Oh, knowledge, the more you know. Da -na -na. Our adaptation of a longtime favorite with notes of chocolate, light berry, and oaky hops in honor of Stephen Fraley. There you go. I'm going to be pouring this into a tulip-style glass. This is a Duval glass that I got from Jonathan at Vape Bash. I have a feeling this beer is going to be very dark. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try my best to put a nice little uh, head on there, Ruby Roo. Eh, there you go. It's a blackened beer. Duval. little taupe head on there. I can smell. It's a very pungent. Sort of burns the nostrils. It's very oaky and woody up front. Yeah, but there you go. Stephen, who is this guy's name? Fraley. Stephen Fraley. And that's cool, actually, to know that a uh, porter, a running porter, is something that you drink fresh, and an aged porter is called a keeping porter, or something that has been aged in a cellar where you cellar a beer. I have a couple of those that I'm just, are sitting on my shelf, and every day I look at them, and I go, I want to drink you guys, and then I go, no, wait. You have to wait. So there, there you go. 1850 runner. Here's to you. Cheers. Oh, so it's a little bit more carbonated than I was expecting, or effervescent. I do get some dark chocolateness, a little bit of like uh, dark berries, like low notes. Um, interesting. It is woody. It makes me think of like a tree, like tree bark. Mm. 
Well, that's uh, really super easy to drink. It's very clean for a porter. Usually, in my experiences, porters have a bit of like a lingering aftertaste. This one is very, very clean. So when you swallow it, it's just you know it's it's gone. It's gone. The flavor is gone out of your mouth. It's quite uh, quite delicious. And I have literally no idea what to pair with this. Let's try Yig. Sure, let's try Yig. This is a fresh rebuild. Uh, this is the Maker RDA. Uh, Sean Hooligan, Hooligan Box Mods, and Yig. Let's try out some Yig with this dark porter. I wish I had some donut pounder, man. <sighs> donut pounder would be good with this. That tobacco juice I have would be good with this. That bakery banana juice I think would be really good with this. I just, as it stands, uh, I don't have anything on my desk that might pair with it. Yig might. It might. Yig is like kind of my go to beer tasting juice, but. We'll get there when we get there. Let's see if it works. Eh, it kind of works. It's not offensive, but it doesn't really work really well. The Yig is a little bit too sweet. It doesn't really go with those like dark, even though Yig does have black currant in it, it doesn't kind of really go with those dark uh, berry flavors. I really wish my M17 was charged because I think my E would actually go really well with this. Let's try to throw. Mm, mm, let's try to throw my E on this hooligan box. What's the wattage set at? I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna put my. E, I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna. I am going to vape my E with this beer. Oh, count on it. All right, 0.26 ohms, 67 watts, 4.18 volts. <sighs> Let me make sure that this is actually has juice in it. Hey, look at that. The coils are all nice and wet. Here we go. My E now with this with this beer, I think is going to be a much better pairing. Yes. Holy crap. Yes. That is a good pairing. That My E really wow, brings out those low berry notes of the beer, the black currant flavor really is wow really good with that beer i want to do it again just because i can good that is delicious well i am <laughs> i am satisfied i'm going to continue drinking this chuck allen 1850 runner i'm going to go charge my axis vapes m17 but what we're going to do after beer time that's right it's time for shout outs. It is shout out time. Got a couple of shout outs here to do. I got a shout out for a fella named Trooper Vapes. So Trooper Vapes emails me and has hey says, Hey Nick, I have two requests. Ever since I sent you those battery wraps, my email inbox and Instagram box have been flooded with people asking for more battery wraps. So if you could say something about how they were a one-off in your next vlog, that would be just fantastic. And the battery wraps he's talking about. They're in this hooligan box. They say Grim Army, and then they have a Stormtrooper on them. This Stormtrooper graphic comes from Abandoned Ship Apparel. I have this on a t-shirt, so he put Grim Army in that on these battery wraps. He doesn't sell them. He made one pair, literally one pair in existence, and I have them. So it's not a thing that you can buy, so don't, uh, why am I having such a hard time putting on this door? It's not something that you can that you can buy, so don't don't hit up Trooper Vapes on Instagram because he can't he can't he just uh, he just can't sell you them. Also, if you could give my wife Anne a shout out for being an amazing woman, she just lost her grandfather who has been like a father to her, and she has been a trooper through the whole thing. She has been very supportive of my vaping and building, and she is all around the best woman I have ever met. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry about the long email. Austin, Trooper Vapes, you and your wife, Anne, are shouted out. And that was not, not, not a long email. I've had way, way longer emails. So I'm, I have another shout out to do from a guy. Now listen, he is Turkish and he's from Turkey. And you know me, I'm really bad with pronunciations. I think his name is Yagiz or Yagiz. I'm not really sure. I'm going to call him Yagiz because that kind of makes more sense to me. Anyway, I'd been emailing with this guy back and forth talking about uh, the, the vape laws in Turkey. You can't ship anything to Turkey. Um, all of our juices at Namber Juice, we can't, we can't ship to Turkey. We just can't. They will get seized at the border and you will not get your shipment. And then that's it. Like your, your vape order will be gone. And so he was emailing me back and forth and we were talking about possibilities of like maybe discreetly 
shipping him some juice, like, uh, you know, not putting fragile liquid on the outside or, you know, somehow discreetly shipping him uh, some juice. And after we went back and forth a couple of times, um, he says, also, Nick, if you could put a shout out in your next vlog to all the Turkish vapors, you know, daily vaping, daily basis vaping is kind of rough for us as we don't have any local vape shops and we have limited vaping gear as time as what in time as they out from market. I don't know exactly what that means. That's fine. I feel lucky in my vape society. It's because I've never had a problem with customs. I receive all of my vape gear, juice and parcels without any problem. Thanks to discreet shipping, but on forums, on the streets who vapes, they're always complaining about the vape regulation, the ban and the lack of gear and juice to find on the go. That's horrible. I'm sorry. That is just terrible. I don't ever want to have to deal with something like that. Um, Definitely shout out to the Turkish vapors who are sticking with it regardless of the silly, stupid, dumb laws that their country has passed. They're still finding a way to vape. And obviously, I totally respect that. So absolutely, Yagas and the Turkish vapors, you are all shouted out. So it's funny, I had two people uh, email me recently. I did some, uh, I did some Photoshop contest giveaways and I had two, and, and these were, you know, these were weeks ago. I had two people email me recently and saying, hey, I'm sorry these are late. I know the contest is over, but I just thought you would enjoy them. So Stefanos and Michelle sent me some great, great Photoshopped pictures. Michelle sent me one where I am wearing Darth Vader's head and then my head is back on the little shelf over here and I just thought that was hilarious and then Stefanos sent me two where it <laughs> one of them looks like I'm running for president because I'm in front of a podium and it says clouds bro and I'm like pointing up to the sky and then he sent me another one that is so random it's me as Luke Skywalker on a hoverboard over the clouds holding a lightsaber and what looks like a Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> and those are amazing. Both Stefan, Stefanos, and Michelle. The next Photoshop contest I have, uh, please enter because that would, that's, that's hilarious. Those are both hilarious. You both have a very high chance of winning if you keep creating quality photoshops like that. But absolutely, Stefanos and Michelle, you are both shouted out. Even if your entries were late, I still found them quite hilarious. I guess we have some time to do a couple more shout outs. Uh, a fellow named Vincent writes to me and says, Hey Nick, I'm 44 years old now and I've been vaping for two years and I've gotten into the vape industry at the right time. I was a heavy drug user. Now I have stopped everything and I'm only into vaping. It changed my life. I will soon be reviewing stuff from a shop here in Switzerland and, uh, where I'm coming from, <laughs> I hope the Swift, Swift Swiss government will not it sign itself with the European Union. Holy crap, can I talk? And holy crap, yes, I just read. Where did I read that? I read it on Reddit. Oh, where was it? I'm 100% sure it was on Reddit. They were saying that Switzerland has declined the TPD. Switzerland as a country. Oh, yeah, Swiss rejects the TPD. It was in uh, it was on the European Vapors subreddit. Well done, Switzerland. Um, Switzerland has rejected the TPD. Basically, the Swiss Federal Council will have to reconsider legislation on its own tobacco products. So they've rejected the TPD, which at first seems like a really great idea. And then you kind of think, well, that means they're going to regulate it themselves, which could maybe be worse than the TPD. But as it stands right now, uh, Vincent, I think you are in the clear because the Swiss country Switzerland, the Swiss country. Yeah, the Swiss country Switzerland has rejected the TPD. So um, uh, da, 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 da. I hope you can give me a shout out. Yep, I really like your honesty and you're always one of my top favorite reviewers. And as always, as you say, let's keep on vaping. With respect, I'm sorry for my bad grammar. I speak French, actually. Have a nice day. And then a load of emojis, Vincent. So yeah, absolutely, Vincent. 
you are shouted out. Looking forward to those reviews that you're doing from uh, from your shop in Switzerland. Do we have time for more? Sure, I think we have time for one more. So Mark writes to me and says, Hey Nick, I'm sure you probably returned home from the UK with a thousand emails waiting for you. It was actually, it was a thousand and, and a million. I just want to thank you for taking the time to come and visit the UK. Ever since I started watching your videos and quit smoking, I have been desperate to meet you and had accepted the fact that I would most likely never have, you would never have a reason for coming here. <laughs> I jumped with joy when I found out you would be attending Vape Jam and proceeded to book my 400 mile train journey only to find out three days before that I had to work the entire weekend. God, what a bummer. I live in Liverpool, so I was so, okay, sorry. I live in Liverpool, so there was no way I could have made it down to London in time to meet you, but I did visit my local vape shop, Herman Vape, Herman Vapes, and asked my buddy Tom, huge beard, to show you a picture of my Grim Army tattoo that I proudly show off to every vapor I meet. Not sure if he took the time to show you, but I just want to again extend my thanks for visiting our great country, and I can only apologize for the organizers not taking the current vaping situation in the UK seriously. Not going to ask for a shout out, as I have already had one in a previous vlog. This is just an extension of gratitude from one vapor to another. Sorry. Uh, Mark, you don't make the rules around here. I do. And you know what, Mark? You're getting shouted out. And absolutely, he does have a Grim Army tattoo. Looks like on the back of his calf, right next to a Vape Life tattoo. So I am in good company on the back of Mark's tattooed leg. Vape Life, Grim Army, absolutely, Mark. You, you are shouted out. So... Uh, I think that's going to do it for shout outs this week, but we've already covered a lot. We've already drank beer. We've already done shout outs. We already did talk about some advocacy. We talked about maybe don't exhale through your nose um, if you don't want dry nostril holes. Anyway, what we're going to do now, um, I do have, eh, it's, it's not going to be that fun. I'm honestly not really looking forward to any of these first impressions, but damn it, that's what we're going to do. It's first impressions. Well, so this is going to be a slightly youd themed show. Uh, my uh, my review for things that never got reviewed is going to be a youd product, and I have a youd product right here. Now, this is the Anzu RDA. It is, you know what? It's a velocity style deck. It's got bottom and side airflow. It's made out of stainless steel, and it's an atomizer. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things. These Chinese companies are trying to one up each other, going, "Well, oh, you have bottom airflow and a velocity deck. We'll have bottom and side airflow and a velocity style deck." It's honestly been a really normal vape. I just, I literally just got this yesterday. I built it with a fuse clapped in. I built it. In fact, Yud is now has these things called wire shots. They come in tubes like this, and they are wires. One of them is a fused Clapton. Let's look at the specs on here. All Canthal, 26 gauge core, 32 gauge outer, which, eh, 32 gauge, okay, that's fine. You know what, that's not gonna be the best fused Clapton uh, flavor. The higher gauge you go on the outer, it's going to uh, be obviously a much better vape. I mean, not obviously, I'm just, in my experience, the higher gauge you go on the outer Claptoning, the better a vape experience you'll have, the better flavor you'll get. So 26 gauge with 32 gauge, and then they have twisted 26 gauge, and they come in like these tubes and these little sticks like this, and you just, you can't even see that. Is that even gonna show up on camera? You just wrap them. And you'd also sent me their new wrapping kit that when I first opened it, it feels a little bit like fucking Dexter Morgan's kill kit because you open it and then this sort of canvas folds out like this, right? And it's a coil wrapper. It comes with a, 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 a resistance reader. It comes with needle nose pliers. It comes with wire cutters. It comes with tweezers. It comes with ceramic tweezers and it comes with a wire wrapper. And what's really interesting is you use screwdrivers to wrap the wires and each screwdriver is, so this is the three millimeter one, right? So you drop this in here, and then you put your wire through the little notch, and then you use this little thing, and you go bleh, 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 to wrap your wire, and then you 
pop this out and now it becomes a screwdriver. So there's one Phillips head that's three millimeters. There's one hex key one that's two millimeters. There's another Phillips one that is 2.5 millimeters. And then there's a flathead screwdriver that is 3.5 millimeters. So not even bothering with like a 1.5 millimeter. No, no, you only can go down to two millimeters now. It's weird and wonky and I don't really like it. I do like these tools. I like the wire clippers. I like the screwdrivers. I like being able to use this three millimeter screwdriver to kind of push and position your coils into place, but I definitely don't like wrapping. I'm an old school guy. I honestly just wrap by hand. Um, lately, I've been getting really lazy and I've been using that uh, Coil Master coil winder kit that seems to work really well. It's just really effortless. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, boom, micro coil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, boom, micro coil. Nine times out of 10, I'm wrapping uh, Clapton's or something like that where you you have to wrap it by hand. A, a coil master or the Ude thing, if you put a fused Clapton in there and you go and you like crank it down and you start wrapping your wraps, it's just gonna pull your Clapton's off because for some reason, the little pokey outy thing that you use to wrap it's like serrated and it'll just rip your claptons to shit but put some claptons in here long story short circling back to the atomizer it's been fine it came out to 0.39 ohms i have it set to 81 watts it's giving me almost six volts it's been fine the juice i have in here is liquid state cali colada which i know what this is supposed to taste like it's supposed to be like a pina colada coconut flavor it kind of just tastes like the mango sticky rice to me. I don't know if they have mango in here, but I kind of just get a mango sticky rice flavor from it. This RDA, it's fine. It's nothing new. <laughs> I mean, how many velocity style deck atomizers do we need? How many? Just throw out a number there. Oh, you have bottom airflow. We have bottom and side airflow. I have been rocking this with the side airflow off, just completely off. You can flip this around and cover up the top holes and just use the bottom holes. And I found that experience to be a little bit better as far as flavor goes. But a lot like the Tsunami, I don't think a velocity style deck in a 22 millimeter atomizer works really well with like bottom Kennedy style airflow. I think it makes the deck a little bit too claustrophobic. This has the same sort of juice wicking problem that the, you know, that the Tsunami has. And additionally, the holes, the airflow holes on the inside aren't just little tubes. They're like these big wide ovals. So if you bleh your juice right into the middle, it's going to go straight down into one of those airflow holes. So I find myself popping the top, painting my juice on there. Paint, 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 paint. Let's try it with all the airflow open, all of the airflows. Super airy, just really super airy. I'll post the link down in the description. Obviously, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm gonna review that later, but there's so much boring vape stuff right now. <laughs> It's really hard to get excited about the Anzu RDA from Yude. Remember when Yude made really, really good products and then they suddenly started releasing really bad, weird products like constantly that don't make any sense? Like there was no need for Yude to release this Anzu RDA. There's no need for this. There's no need for this RDA to exist. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. It's a velocity deck. It's the Tsunami with middle airflow as well. Cool, more airflow. If you want an airier Tsunami, then that's that's what you get in the Anzu RDA. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I just wanna see a little bit, something different, just something different. Additionally, you'd send over a battery case um, that they're calling the Clapton Coil Kit which is basically a bunch of their Clapton coils in baggies and then a bunch of cotton. And that's their Clapton coil kit that you can buy. It's, I don't know, it's a thing. You can pay money for this if you want to, or either way, you just learn how to build your old Claptons. And additionally, they sent over uh, these little blister packs of coils. These are 26 gauge black on clear. That was a good idea. Uh, these are all one ohm. So these are 
26 gauge Canthal one ohm coils. You can buy blister packs of them. Okay, Yud. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Yud. That was the Yud segment. At least, at least until we get to the things reviews for things that never got reviewed. So the next thing I have to review, or the next thing, new to, two first impressions I have left to do are the Vertex tank from Horizon Tech, which I literally have not opened, and this guy right here, the Geometry tank from Vapesig that I have literally not opened either. So these are going to be true, true first, first impressions. So this geometry tank, I believe is a coil head tank and it does have an RDA base. It's got airflow very similar to the scrape. There's a little ball bearing and then you can click, 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 open your airflow, click, 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 click. Mm, that could be mouth to lungy. Let's try it on the open setting. It's stiff. That is a stiff airflow. How do you fill this? So I screwed off the top and the whole chimney came out. The chimney does not screw down onto the base. How do you fill this? Okay, this is going to be a bottom fill. No, that doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, it does. It's gonna be a bottom fill because this is the chimney. This is the little build deck. It looks exactly like the sub tank build deck. It's a two post, single airflow in the middle, and then two holes in the side of the chimney. And then this is held on here by a little set screw. This doesn't screw down. This chimney just freely floats on here. There's no O-rings or anything in here. What? No O-rings. No O-rings to hold that down or screw this down. It just sits. Oh man, that's going to leak like crazy because there's no, there's nothing to close off the vacuum. Tanks are based on the vacuum that's created on the inside so juice doesn't just flood into your coil head. You know what I mean? There needs to be O-rings to maintain the integrity of that vacuum in there. Let's look at one of these coil heads. I don't feel like building right now, so I'm going to use one of these coil heads. And I believe they are ceramic coil heads. <laughs> okay, I am so confused, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to plug the 0.5 ohm in here. It comes with two 0.5 ohm coil heads. These are ceramic coil heads they say there's no cotton in them they're just ceramic coil heads and i've unscrewed the 510 pin somehow how the fuck did that happen okay well whatever i need to get some juice in here i'm sorry i just need to get some juice in here somehow when i've screwed in and out the coil head base it unscrewed the 510 pin i just find it so strange that the chimney just it's not even tight or press fit or anything there's no o-rings there's no screw down the chimney just is gonna sit there. I'm so confused by this. I'm confused and terrified, quite honestly, because I don't want this to leak out like crazy everywhere. All right, well, I got a tobacco flavor here. I'm gonna put the chimney, I'm gonna screw this back on. I can't believe that, that that's how this works. It's still boggling, boggling my mind. Yeah, it's a bottom fill. Uh, open counterclockwise at the base, inject e-liquid into the inner tube, clockwise base back on. So let's get this all primed. I'm gonna put a couple of drops of juice into the coil head. I'm gonna fill up my tank. We're gonna we're gonna see how this guy vapes. I'm literally terrified that this is just going to leak everywhere. Definitely need some sort of needle-nosed tipped unicorn bottle to fill this tank up. A glass dripper bottle is not going to cut it. Okay, back together. Let's put the airflow on. I'm so nervous right now. I'm gonna put this on the the lung setup for Clouds Bro Clouds, even though it's a little bit stiff. So what I'm gonna do, prime this up. So I'm gonna turn off the airflow completely. And I'm gonna give it a couple one of these. Just to kind of get the juice flowing where it needs to go. You should see some bubbles happening. This is supposed to be a 0.5 ohm coil. It's pretty accurate. It's coming in at 0.47. So what I'm going to do is turn this down to like 35 watts and uh, just see if any vapor gets produced before I crank up the watt. Quank? Sure. Crank up the voltage. Crank up the wattage. Vapors are being produced. Let's turn this wattage up, son. 61. Huh. The flavor on that is quite, quite nice. I hate this little drip tip, though. 
you're the first thing to go, little drip tip. So I love it when you get a tank and you hate the drip tip and then no other drip tip will fit in there except the one that you hate that it came with. Such is the case in this. I just, I seriously just tried like 15 different drip tips. The dot mods don't fit in there. No pressure fits, no pressure fitting drip tips will fit in there. So it looks like I'm stuck with this stupid drip tip that I hate. I will say that the flavor is really nice on these coil heads. Um, they broke in really fast. I had to do very little priming on these. 0.7 or 0.47 at 61 watts. The flavor is really nice. The vapor is warm. Haven't got any sort of dry hits. It doesn't look like it's flooding or leaking yet. I'm just so worried that there's no O-rings or screw threads on the chimney. Uh it's freaking me out a little bit, but you know what? I'm going to vape it for a little bit right now. We'll come back to it after I do the next tank, which I am going to have to build on. So this is the Horizon Tech Vertex Plus RTA. Interesting. Interesting, right? This is looks to be a 25 millimeter tank. Um, that seems to be the popular thing with China right now. 25 millimeter tanks. Let's get the airflow all the way open and let's just test the airflow. Holy shit. That is the airiest airflow I've ever aired in my life. Holy crap, that is a lot of airflow. And once again, thankfully, this drip tip is actually pretty comfortable. This is a oddly sized drip tip that I'm assuming I will have nothing else that fits in here, which is kind of a bummer. You know what I mean? Drip tips is kind of those the one thing on a th on a device or like an RDA or a tank that you can change. You can swap it out to suit your needs, to suit your style if you want to be matchy matchy, but this one's just all black. Eh, thankfully it looks pretty good. Looks like it does have juice flow open. Juice flow closed kind of system going on here, which is cool. Loads of airflow. I, I mean, the airflow in this is kind of unbelievable. Holy shit. I'm going to have to zoom in on this deck because you wouldn't believe it if I explained it to you. Do you see that giant gaping hole in the middle? That's where your airflow is coming from. And then there's juice you know, for your wicks right there, obviously velocity style deck, way to innovate China. Big airflow on the bottom, which goes right into the middle. You can see right down to the 510 pin. That hole in the center is gigantic. No wonder this thing has so much airflow. That is insane. Look how huge that is. I feel like, oh, <laughs> wow. I'm just thankful that this isn't a dripper because if that was a dripper, there's no bleh in your juice through the middle on that. That is a canyon in there. Looks to have like insulated negative post right there, or insulated positive post right there, negative post right there for your juice. Wow. Wow. I just couldn't believe that. Look how big that is in the middle. Crazy. That is crazy amount of airflow. Crazy amount of airflow. Oh, okay. This fell out. Oh, this goes on top of your wicks like the griffin okay so there you go that's a thing all right well eh, i'm kind of meh i'm a little optimistic about this i'm really interested to vape this thing i want to see how the flavor is going to be big kidney shaped juice flow holes on the top does the tank come all the way apart oh yes okay Whew. that's always the toughest thing to do i may have ruined an o-ring there but the tank does come completely apart good good I'm going to throw this on the Silo 2000 here, and I am going to just build it. I kind of want to put, I don't know, some fuse Claptons in there. I don't want to do a round wire build. Does it come with an Allen key? It does. I wonder if the Twisted Messes one works in here, because I love this fucking thing. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. So that's cool. All right, well, um, let, me, let me throw a quick build in here. Uh, it'll probably be a fuse clapped, and I, I think I have some pre-made fuse clapped and wire um, that I made earlier sitting around here, and I'm just going to throw it in there. So building on this was actually fairly easy. It's a velocity-style deck, so it's easy to build on, and I didn't have any pre-made Clapton sitting around. I thought I had made more, but evidently I didn't, so I just decided to do a 24-gauge Anarchist round wire build. This is an 8-wrap around a 3mm, and the little halo right here for the wicking is actually really easy easy to use you wick it like you would any other rta i just kind of lightly placed my wicks down in there and then i slid this halo down on top and once the halo is kind of down on top you can kind of push you know push your wick in here you can 
pull it up from the top if it's too long. You can push it back down. You can get it to where you need to get it. And I mean, wicking it was champion. It was super easy. So yeah, that's the build I do on it. I just have to get some juice in it now. So I decided to throw some Ronin Emperor's Crunch inside this tank just because, again, it's a nostalgic juice for me that I haven't actually really had in a long time. I'm going to juice up these coils, you know, like you would with any tank or with any dripper before I before I fill up the tank. Came out to 0.27 ohms. I have it set at 67 watts right now. Yeah. <sighs> Looks like vapors are happening. I am really for some reason excited to vape this that airflow just impressed the hell out of me like holy crap mountains of airflow are these threads gonna grab oh come on man how are these threads not grabbing right now what is wrong what the fuck is going on here it's pulling my wicks out i tried to screw on the, the tank and it just fucked up all my wicks and took the uh Took the halo, took the juice fill halo. Oh, now it's stuck in here. Took that juice flow or the uh, the wick little halo deal here completely off. God damn it! I don't want to fiddle this much right now. How is it already leaking juice out the bottom? I haven't even filled the tank up yet. Are you serious right now? I'm not even joking. I haven't even filled the tank up yet, and there are. There are droplets of juice coming out of the airflow. God, I need to wash my hands so bad. I have juice everywhere. So I'm not gonna be filling this tank up all the way in the event that this somehow leaks and floods out the bottom. I don't need an entire like four and a half mils of Emperor's Ronin's Crunch in my lap. So let's open the juice flow. There's the wicks. There you go. You're all together now. Still, mountains of airflow. Just, wow, that's the most airflow I've literally ever experienced in a tank. More than the mouse, more than any other tank, that airflow is just redonkulous. But I know my wicks are where, uh, I know my wicks are wet in there. I don't know if it's uh, wicking right now, but I, I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, and why does this look crooked? I'm nervous, and I don't know why that looks crooked, but it's seriously leaning back. Hard. Shit. Well, that tastes like literally nothing. What? Flavor? Yeah, I mean, look. I vape a lot of Ronin Emperor's Crunch. It tastes like Captain Crunch to me. I love, love this flavor. I'm used to it in a Dot Mod Petri. This is the first time I've ever put it in a tank. This is a 25 millimeter RTA that has a mountain of airflow and the flavor is just horrific and that tank still looks crooked to me. No, that one was dry. This tank has too much airflow. The small and skinny of it is this tank just has too much airflow. And there's juice. I hate feeling like I'm the beta tester for a product. I, do all US vapors feel like that? Because that's exactly how I feel right now. I feel like Horizon Tech over-engineered this Vertex tank and went, let's just put a fuck ton of airflow in it and didn't think about the fact that you need to create a vacuum inside your tank so that juice can go to your wicks. There has to be some resistance. And the flavor is just atrocious. Well, I'm glad I spent like a fucking hour now building and wicking and filling that fucking tank. And now... I'm getting no good flavor. No good flavor. First impressions of this tank, no good flavor. Uh, I vaped a fuck ton of Emperor's Crunch from Ronin. The flavor is just horrific. The airflow is unbelievably wide open, and I don't think it's wicking properly. I don't see any bubbles happening, and I feel like it's leaning. It looks like it's leaning back to me. Does anybody else see this? It really looks like it's leaning backwards to me. For 
that hit was very, very, very dry. All right, Vertex, I give up. I give up on you, Vertex. I'll post a link down in the description to the Horizon Tech Vertex if you're interested in checking it out. And like with all my first impressions, which there weren't many this week, I do need to spend way more time with them. Honestly, out of all of them, that useless Anzu Yud <laughs> RDA, I've been having the best experience with so far. It's it's a shockingly good vape. So yeah, I'm interested to keep trying that geometry tank with those ceramic coil heads. I really want to like this fucking Horizon Tech, what do you call the Vertex Plus tank, but holy crap, that was a nightmare to build on. Uh, not really a nightmare to build on. It was just RTAs just take longer. I'm used to drippers where I can throw a dual fuse Clapton in it and wick it in like five minutes. And for some reason, RTAs always take the most effort, and to me, they are the least satisfying vape. It takes, it's the most effort for the least amount of payoff, and a dripper is the least amount of effort for the most amount of payoff. That's where I stand on the subject. Sorry, not sorry, that's just how I feel. And damn it, that is crooked. It is definitely leaning back. It is definitely leaning back. Juice flow is open. I wonder if I can close off this airflow. Did anybody see any bubbles happen? I see no bubbles happening. This is going to be a fucking goddamn fiddly tank. Dry. Oh, dry. Wow, dry. Okay, well, so maybe that's me. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I didn't wick it correctly. Or maybe my coils, maybe that tank with a three millimeter coil, it's just too big. It's just too much cotton. Maybe you need like a two millimeter coil so you can put less cotton down in there. The airflow is off the charts. It's the most airflow I've ever had in a tank, unfortunately, even more than the Griffin, which let's talk about that for a second. I finally got this Griffin 25 millimeter all built perfectly, wicked perfectly. I have a juice. It's just, it's not a DIY juice, but it's a couple flavors mixed together that I really, really like. It's uh, Epiclouds Glacier Banana and Epiclouds Oasis Mist, Mist mixed 50 50, and it's a wonderful summertime vape. 0.18 ohms, 69 watts. Good. The flavor is actually good. The flavor is leaps and bounds better right now than that Vertex Plus. Unfortunately, the airflow setting I have on this Griffin 24, Griffin 25 millimeter tank um, makes it just sound like a tornado outside. That is nice. That is highly decent, good. I mean, it's not amazing flavor, but it's good flavor. I, I did want to talk real quick while we're making this vlog as long as I possibly can. I got that Lava Box um, 1300 milliamp battery extension. It's literally the easiest thing I've ever installed. All you do is remove the screws for the cover. You remove two screws here, and then you disconnect your LiPo battery that's in your Lava Box already. It's it's simple little pop, pop, you just pop it out, you put the new battery in, you put the extended housing on, two screws, then you put your plastic cover back on, which is four screws, it fired up perfectly, has been charging perfectly, I've been getting a much better battery life, it adds a bit of girth to the lava box, it actually fake makes it feel a lot bigger and a lot more substantial, I still get some rattly buttons, but that was an issue with the lava box to begin with, was the was the rattly buttons, but um, it's been rocking, it's been doing really good, and it was really, really easy to swap out, so if you have a lava box, I would really highly recommend getting that 1300 mAh extension battery pack, I'll put a link down in the description, but this little combo right here, this lava box, and this 25 millimeter Griffin, has been a really nice vape, the flavor's good, it's wicking good, it's 0.18 ohms at 69 watts. It's just so frustrating going from such a good vaping experience like that to this brand new Horizon Vertex that I'm convinced is leaning back and has just terrible flavor. 
though all these hits are dry hits, uh, that cotton is dry in there. Anyway, so, yay! That was like a fun little first impressions. You know what I want to do now is I got out a uh, atomizer, and I got out some eco wool. We're going to do some retro vaping. All right, so what are we going to be retro vaping this week? Well, I managed to procure some eco wool. Eco wool from a fella in North Carolina who, again, I can't remember the name. I probably told you to your face. I'm, I apologize. I probably told you to your face. Yeah, oh, of course. Thank you. I'll remember your name. I totally don't remember your name. So if you were in North Carolina and you handed me two little thingies of eco wool, then please email me, nickgrimgreen.com, so I can give you proper credit. But what I have is the Castle RDA. Does anybody remember the Castle RDA? I used to just freaking love, 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 love this RDA. It was, it was good. It was one of those, you know, the first RDAs that I really, really fell in love with. It was a three post RDA and I used to build like one ohm coils on it and I used to rock it on a, a 26650 mech mod. I used to rock it on that ruthless bomber. Does anybody remember the ruthless bomber mech mod? It was great. And what I'm going to do, this was, so when I had this castle RDA originally, in fact, I'll link down in the description to my castle RDA review that I did. I think this is from back in 2013. We were already using cotton back then, but what I wanted to do was put a single coil, which I believe I can do with this RDA. I want to put a single coil. Ooh, maybe not. Shit. Shit. Well, either way, I'm still going to put a single coil. I'm going to put a single coil eco wool build in here because because eco wool so what the hell is eco wool we went through a phase way back in the day uh with vaping where we were trying all sorts of different wicking things we had uh silica and we hadn't used cotton yet but we were using silica and eco wool and xc116 does anyone remember xc116 it was like this uh kiln treated ceramic fiber or something that you could only buy from one place because they were the only people that were properly kiln treating it they had to heat it up to like 3000 degrees to like burn off these imparticulates and imparticulates that's not a word these particulates and this that and the other but eco wool is basically glorified silica it's like a braided silica wick so i want to build with it just because I'm feeling like it. So what I'm going to do, this looks like a three millimeter silica or a eco wool little, you know, shoelace here. So what I always used to do is hold my eco wool next to a very small screwdriver. And then I would wrap space coils around the screwdriver and the eco wool at the same time very very small tiny toothpick sized screwdriver so that you can slide the screwdriver out and then your coils are already wrapped around your eco wool and the great thing about eco wool is you can fire it you can dry fire eco wool and it does not burn it can withstand ridiculous temperatures so what i'm going to do this is 26 gauge one two three four five six Sure. How about a six rep? So yeah, you pop your screwdriver out, then you have a 26 gauge six rep. <laughs> oh, that's so vintagely old school. And you install this on your RDA just as it is. And if you were doing a dual coil, then you would do obviously two of these. But this is a uh, Dual coil RDA, but I'm gonna put a single coil eco wool build on here. Now these post holes, I used to build this with 29 gauge canthal. These post holes are tiny. 22 gauge wouldn't fit in here. These post holes are so tiny. Yeah, they're open. Okay, let's do the install. My coils are all messed up. And so what you had to do was you installed your coils and 
If you could wrap them well to begin with, then cool. But generally, you couldn't do that. And so you just wrapped them on there. You got them around the eco wool or the silica. You dry fired them. And then you used a tiny little flathead screwdriver to like move them around and like get them so they're sort of evenly spaced out. So I got this on here. Let's cut these leads. And oh man, I wish... I wish I had a, a macro shot of this. I want to show you how bad these coils look right now. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out my little close-up iPhone camera, and I'm going to take a picture of these just horrible, horrible-looking coils. I want to show you a before shot, and then I want to show you an after shot. All right, so there's the before shot. Click. And then after we... Uh, <laughs> These are so bad. After we uh, get a resistance, yes. Ooh, 0.5. I'm gonna turn this wattage way down. Oh yeah, they're they're glowing just horrifically, just the worst you've ever seen. All right. Well, after some poking and moving and this, that, and the other, uh, I got them actually going pretty evenly. The ramp up time on this is insane. I mean, in. Sane, but the eco wool is in there snug. Let me take you an after picture and I'll try to get it. No, I'm not gonna be able to get it while it's glowing. But this is the after picture. Ready? Click. I'm gonna turn this all the way down to like 10 watts. Even then, the ramp up time on this is. <sighs> Ridiculous. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but douche, douche. Ramp up time is ridiculous. So, cutting eco wool was always a bit of a nightmare because it frays so bad on the edges. It just frays like crazy. Yep, there it goes. Awesome. Awesome. So, I'm going to try to do my best to tuck these in. And it's always strange because when silica or eco wool, which again, this is what we had to build with, whenever it got wet, um, with juice, it turned transparent. It started off as this bright white, and then as you juiced it and used it, it just turned into like a... It, I don't know, it looked weird. It looked like transparent, like quite literally it looked transparent, like a, like a transparent jelly or something. How did we vape like this? Let's turn the wattage way down. <laughs> Let's turn the wattage to four... Why are there hot spots at four watts? Oh no. This DNA 200 is doing it too. Okay, this is gonna, this vlog is gonna run way too long. I'm gonna have to cut out reviews for things that never got reviewed. This DNA 200 just started doing it. I just experienced this on the Silo 2000. I have this set to one watt right now. One watt, when I press the button, eight volts. I ran into this problem before and I had to restore the DNA 200 firmware in the eScribe software. This is the second time I've run into this. One single watt, nine volts. That's why it's heating up and firing so freaking aggressively right now. God damn it. Okay, I don't have time to do that, so I'm going to put this on the... Uh, I'm gonna put this on the Vapor Shark DNA 200. I thought it was a fluke on that Silo 2000 mod, and I had to restore the the firmware. I had to restore it in the eScribe software, um, and it's because I, I was vaping a tank like all day in this uh, on this Silo 2000, and it was great and great and great, and suddenly, just without warning, it was like the most horrible, acrid, just burnt death. I mean, my wicks were destroyed in this tank. And I'm like, whoa, that was really bizarre. And so I tried to hit it again because I'm an idiot. Same thing happened again. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. So I looked at my DNA 200. I turned the wattage all the way down to four watts and it was still firing at nine volts. I don't know if that's like a glitch in the system or something. Yes, this is a new coil. We're going to turn the wattage way down way down. We're going to turn this down to 20 watts. There we go. That is much more reasonable. Look at that. It's firing like a normal thing should fire. So 
Wow, those O-rings on this are weak. <laughs> just, just saying. Hashtag just saying. The O-rings on the castle are super weak. But we got it. We got a single coil eco wool wick in there. I'm going to see if a drip tip fits in here. Sure, it looks ugly and ridiculous. Okay, here we go. Finally, time to retro vape. Single 26 gauge around an eco wool. I think I did seven wraps, came out to 0.7 ohms. I have it set to 22 watts. I'm going to vape it. Uh, what juice is that? Donut pounder. Wow. Okay, so even on the biggest airflow setting, this is tighter than the tugboat. It's tighter than the dot mod, tighter than the tugboat. And it still vapes. And that eco wool is a bitch to work with, and it's a bitch to build with. And just be thankful. Be thankful that if you're a vapor today and you got into vaping within the last year, maybe within the last two years, you never had to deal with silica and you never had to deal with freaking eco wool. Because let me tell you, they were a pain in the ass to build with, and they were just a pain in the ass to work with. I mean, could you, I couldn't even imagine right now trying to build like the Zephyrus or the Goblin Mini with freaking silica? Could you imagine building the Goblin Mini with silica? I would tear my hair out. It would be ridiculous. But you know what? That's what we had back then. So, you know, we did what we could to make it work. It's the uh, coldest vape I think I've ever had. It's a very, very stiff airflow on this RDA. I don't know. How's the silica holding up? Looks still nice and wet and juicy. Look at that. And it works. I mean, that is producing the vapors. Let's get some more juice on there. This is a, uh, this is a retro vape that I'm probably not going to keep around uh, for very long. In fact, I'm probably going to tear this down right after I'm done shooting this video. Man, those O-rings on the castle, they are worse than the Twisted Messes version 1. But <laughs> the flavor is actually surprisingly good, even with dual airflow on a single coil, 26 gauge, eight wrap around eco wool. The flavor is still better than that freaking new Horizon Tech Tank, whatever it's called, the Vertex Plus. Wow, okay. There you go. I'm surprised. So, since this vlog has officially run so long that I want to stab my eyes out, I am going to skip reviews for things that never got reviewed. We'll just have to put it in next week, which is just fine by me. But I can't end the vlog without doing uh, yours, mine, and everyone's favorite segment. This is uh, Favorite Comments of the Week. <laughs> So I believe I have two favorite comments of the weeks. Uh, one of them is really long. The, fir <laughs> the first one is great. It's nice and short. A guy named Sleuth1977 wrote in, uh, left a comment. I, don't, uh, I never remember which video, but he left a comment that says, oh, this was in the UK Vape Jam video, obviously. He wrote a comment that says, I love Todd, but sometimes I think he looks like a lesbian. <laughs> and I don't know if that's like... Uh, a slight against Todd or like a dig at lesbians, which, you know, I'm not okay with, but I chuckled at that. And I guess I need to apologize to Todd right now. But yes, when I read Sleuth's comment, oh, I'm going straight to hell for this. I, uh, I chuckled a little bit. Next favorite comment of the week, Sparksy wrote in on a, on a video, left a comment that says, discard is one word, you cretin. Why ruin the English language? Yes. I'm ruining the English language by saying discard instead of discard. I don't know. And then he went on to write just like that, 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 about a billion and a half times. And then at the end, he wrote just like that, paint, 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 juice, 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 juice. Brilliant. It took him... 
I don't know, probably a full minute to a minute and a half to write this entire comment, and he seems very upset at first because I'm a Cretan that's ruining the English language. <sighs> Interesting. People these days, man. So the, my last favorite comment of the week, a guy named Bang Bang went through on, uh, I don't know, at least my last 20 videos that I uploaded and left the same comment on each one. And he said, can someone please help me quit smoking nasty cigarettes by sending me any spare parts for a startup for me? Thank you, Joseph. And then he gave his full address, his full address, which I, of course, have blacked out. But he left his full address on like at least that I saw 10, 15, maybe 20 videos I couldn't delete them all because he there were there was so many and I would seek I was looking in each video I'm like if this guy did this on every video then you know what he deserves to have someone send something weird to his host please if you're new to the internet if you've been on the internet please do not leave your full address on public like in a forum or on a public YouTube video. I'm sorry bang bang. You could have just emailed me. I'm assuming I have a starter kit I could have sent you. But to comment on every video that I've uploaded and say, "Can someone please help me quit by sending me a starter kit? Here's my address." in a comment on YouTube. That he I mean he, he, this guy he, he's going to have his identity stolen soon if it hasn't happened already because that's just super carelessness Joseph super carelessness please don't please don't do that in the future oh I had this other thing that I wanted to talk about well that's good I got some stuff for next week vlog absolutely I'm not sure if you notice my sniffle I'm not sick I'm not like sick sick but I don't feel quite at a hundred percent which is maybe why I've been a little bit loopy and angry this video uh, I need, still need to eat some dinner I still need to finish this beer so I'm gonna wrap this up but that was the vlog thank you so much everybody for watching don't forget you can always join me every Monday Tuesday Wednesday for my weekly review series I'm just gonna be cranking those out up until VPX New Orleans after that I don't have anything in June and then in July is a uh, VCC Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, Kevin Skipper in Pittsburgh, and it's going to be just a really fun event. I think I'm going to travel vlog. I think I'm going to travel vlog that event. In fact, I'm going to travel vlog VPX. I think I'm going to travel vlog Pittsburgh and uh, all regular videos all throughout it. But yeah, that's what I got. Again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Thank you, everybody, for watching the vlog. It's it's where my heart is. If there's one thing in my life that I truly do need and love, love to do. It's the vlog, and I'm glad that you guys enjoy it because I love doing it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We're gonna, we're gonna, how about this? How about the castle RDA on top of the Vapor Shark? New meets old with eco wool in the middle. That's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and yeah, let's keep on vaping.